Now, preaching about the true meaning of Christmas, that is very common for me to do. I love to preach about Christmas itself. I love the Christmas season. That is why I love to preach about getting into the spirit of Christmas. That is why I love to preach about that old Christmas spirit. Another reason that I love preaching about Christmas is because I want everyone to be able to enjoy celebrating the birth of Christ just as much as I do. So when we talk about the Christmas spirit, I want to put emphasis on the word spirit here. In order for one to get into the spirit of Christmas, one must come to understand what that spirit actually is. Now, this is a thought that, believe it or not, reminds me of the Merry Christmas Charlie Brown TV special. Chuck, he spends the entirety of the 30 minute special trying to get into the Christmas spirit. At the start of the special, Chucky speaks with his friend Linus about his feelings on entering into the Christmas season. He expressed to his friend that something must have been wrong with him. And the reason why he felt that something must have been wrong with him was because it was Christmas time, but he was not feeling merry. It was Christmas time, but Chuck said that he was not happy. And because he was not happy, Chuck felt like he must not have understood what Christmas was actually all about. He then expressed to Linus that he did like sending out Christmas cards, that he did like decorating the trees, that he did like getting presents. Yet, he ultimately felt like he was depressed. He felt depressed about Christmas time. And and again, I believe that there are many people that feel that same way around this time of year. They are depressed about Christmas. Chucky grew depressed watching Snoopy decorate his doghouse only because he wanted to win some money. He grew more depressed when his sister asked him to write a letter to Santa because she just wanted some money. He eventually threw his hands in the air aghast about the commercialization, about the greed surrounding the day of Christmas. At the climax of the special, he had an outburst. And Chuck, he loudly asked, isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? You see, again, I tell you today that He wanted to get into the spirit of Christmas, but nothing that was of this world was getting him into the true spirit of the day. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I believe that there are many Charlie Browns in the world today during this time of the year. There are many, I believe, that are depressed, I believe that there are many who are sad, who are tired, who are bitter in their soul, in their hearts when it comes to Christmas. Mm -hmm. They want to find, they want to try to get into the spirit of Christmas, but sadly, they are unable to. They cannot seem to get into the Christmas spirit in their heart. So I tell you all that I was curious as to what the world would say when it came to encouraging someone to getting into the spirit of Christmas. I found that there was a lot of advice to getting into the spirit of Christmas, but most of the advice I found had little to nothing to do with the true spirit of Christmas. Some of the advice I found said that what could help someone get into the spirit of Christmas would be to decorate, putting up a Christmas tree, hanging Christmas lights, 
listening to Christmas music and, and watching Christmas movies and Christmas specials were encouraged in helping someone get into that old Christmas spirit. Something as simple as drinking hot chocolate was something that I consistently came across that they said could help somebody get into the spirit of Christmas. Imagine that. Drinking hot chocolate to get into the spirit of Christmas. Maybe that works for some. I imagine it does. Lastly, and this one was the most mind boggling for me. Lastly, I read that setting a budget could help somebody get into the spirit of Christmas. That would just drive me mad. <laughs> I don't want to think about setting the budget. And then it said that, hey, go shopping. Shopping will help you get into the spirit of Christmas. I don't know about that one. I don't like shopping when it ain't Christmas. Let alone shopping for Christmas. That already drives me crazy because I don't know what to get anybody. I got a desk right out of that. Now these, you know, sending Christmas cards, yeah, I get that one. I have never done it, but it works for some. Baking goods, eating seasonal treats. Hey, I'm always up for eating, so I got no problem with that. But, you know, these are things that were suggested that could help someone get into the spirit of Christmas. But I don't know if y'all noticed something there. Now, admittedly, I can understand the sentiment behind some of these ideas because, again, I love hanging up decorations. I love hanging up Christmas lights. I love the Christmas music. I love the TV specials. I'm all about watching Charlie Brown, as y'all know. I done said that before. I love watching Rafa and his Red Rider BB gun. I love watching Kevin McAllister and, and Home Alone. Okay, I love those things. However, the, the thing that I noticed, the problem that I noticed with these encouragements for helping someone get into the spirit of Christmas is that a lot of the advice, it had absolutely nothing to do with Christ himself. The advice I found, it could make one happy. However, the happiness and the joy that would be given would be a happiness and a joy that would be seasonal. Do you all get what I mean by that? That happiness and that joy that would be given by looking at the TV specials and, and listening to the music and drinking hot chocolate, it would be a happiness that was temporary. And temporary happiness, that just ain't good enough for me. I don't know about you all, but seasonal happiness, seasonal joy, temporary happiness and joy, that just ain't good enough for me. You see, what happens when the specials, what happens when the music, what happens when the decorations are taken down? What happens when all of that stuff goes away? People would be left with their depression. And I tell you, that is not what the spirit of Christmas is all about. So to truly get into the spirit of Christmas, you have to, I tell you today, you have to take a look at Christ. You have to take a look at the giving of Christ. You have to take a look at the manner in which Christ lived. In understanding the giving of Christ and the manner in which he lived, I tell you today that you can more fully understand the true spirit of Christmas. In his special, when Charlie Brown had asked if anybody knew what Christmas was all about, Linus, his friend, stepped up to the plate. And Linus, he quieted everyone who was in the room. And he began to speak. 
And, and the words that Linus began to share with Chuck were from the Bible. They were from Luke's gospel. He began to quote scripture to Charlie Brown so that Charlie Brown could understand what Christmas was all about. Mm -hmm. Linus, he said, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. These were the words of the shepherds or the angels that spoke to the shepherds while they were in the field. Mm -hmm. They said to the shepherds again, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Yes, it is just a cartoon Christmas special. But those who were behind this Christmas special, I tell you that they understood very well what the true spirit of Christmas actually is. The spirit of Christmas it begins and it ends with God's giving of his only begotten son. The true spirit of Christmas, it has nothing to do with the tree. It has nothing to do with the lights. It has nothing to do with the baked sweets. It has nothing to do with the music. It has nothing to do with Kevin McAllister. Nothing to do with the Grinch. Nothing to do with Raffi and his Red Rider BB gun. It has nothing to do with the gifts that we give. We must consider the giving of Christ and the reason, the purpose that he was given so that we can know and so that we can understand the true spirit of Christmas. You see, Jesus, he was given to the world for the purpose of bringing joy, not to some people, but to all people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To Nicodemus, Jesus said that he was given to the world because God loved the world. Mm -hmm. So love, as often is the case, love is the answer once again for us. Mm -hmm. Love, I want you to know today, love is the true spirit of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Love was behind the giving of Christ. That is what we must come to know. That is what we must come to understand today. Love is behind Christmas. So therefore, love is the spirit of Christmas. Do you hear me here today? Now, the love I want you to understand is, again, not our idea of love. It is not a worldly love. The love that we speak of today, it is the love of God. Mm -hmm. The love of God, it is not puffed up. The love of God, it does not behave rudely. The love of God, it is not selfish. The love of God, it does not think evil. As we know, the love of God, it is not seasonal. You see, the love of God, it is everlasting. The love of God, I want you to know in here today, just as Paul said, the love of God, it never fails. So if you truly want to get into the Christmas spirit, again, I tell you, you must come to know this love. <clears throat> to know this love, we must come to know it through Christ because he again is love. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we must follow in the manner of Christ so that the spirit of Christ lives within us and then becomes a part of our everyday walk for our lifetime, but not only for our lifetime, but beyond our <laughs> lifetime as well. Now, the best way for us to follow in the manner of Christ is by being in fellowship, that is, in a close relationship with him. The way that you and I enter into fellowship with the Lord is by loving him 
and by fully trusting in him. As we see John state here in 1 John, in my key verse for today there in 1 John, we'll see that John stated that we enter into fellowship with Christ when we choose to walk in the light of Christ. Again, for all of you, that is the first chapter in 1 John. And again, we read the entire chapter for our response of reading for today. And our key verse ought to be the seventh verse. Jesus, we should remember, said that he is the light of the world. And I tell you that there are great benefits to choosing to be in fellowship with him. There are great benefits to choosing to walk in his light. Okay. And again, these benefits, they give us that spirit of Christmas we will come to see here today. The light of Christ, it is a light that is all revealing. It reveals what is hidden in the dark. Therefore, the light of Christ, it is a revealer of the truth. To the Pharisees, when they were trying to get Jesus to stone a woman, Jesus, he said to them that those who follow him shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The light of Christ, I want you to know today that it is life-giving. What this means is that the light of Christ, it gives us hope. It gives us hope in our heart. While we are present in this world, Jesus, he encouraged us that we should walk in the light lest darkness overtake us. You see, when one moves in the dark, they do not know where they are going. When, when one walks in the dark, the only thing that they will end up doing is they would end up stumbling over and over and over again as they end up lost in the dark. And when they stumble and they stumble over and over and over again in the dark, they will do nothing but fall down. They will fall over and over and over again. Therefore, being in the dark would mean that one would eventually lose hope. Being in the dark would mean that one eventually has no hope. Mm -hmm. How can the one that has no hope ever have the spirit of Christmas in their heart? Mm -hmm. How can one who has no hope ever have love in their heart? Mm -hmm. However, when you choose to be in fellowship with Christ, his light will always be with you. Again, I want to put emphasis on the word always here. What this means for us when I say that his light will always be with us is that it means that his hope will always be with us. His hope for us, it will always be never ending. Our hope will never be in. In good or bad, the hope of Christ, I want you to know today, when you are in fellowship with him, when you are in a close relationship with him, the hope of Christ, it will be with you. And I tell you today that that is an incredible benefit to have. In this world that we live in, in this cruel, cruel world, filled with all kind of hatred, it is good for you to always have hope in Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. That is a wonderful benefit to have. Mm -hmm. Because again, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson, when we have hope, we will never give up on God. We will never lose our faith. Mm -hmm. So John again tells us that we will have the hope. And in this hope, we will always, John says there, we will always overcome darkness. That is, again, is the darkness that may lie within our hearts. Let me show you what I mean by that today. Darkness, we should understand, is everything that is not of Christ. Darkness, it is bitterness. 
Darkness, it is hatred. Darkness, it is corruption. There is nothing good in darkness. There again, I say to you today, there is no hope in darkness. And total darkness is where sin rests. And sadly, there are many people who are going further and further down the well of darkness. And to what good? I must ask. You see, darkness is what causes mankind to continue to stumble over and over and over again because there is no sense of direction in the dark. See, how can we again love anybody if there is darkness in our soul? How again can we ever move in the spirit of Christ, let alone Christmas, if there is darkness there in our soul? See, that bitterness, that hatred, and that corruption, that darkness, that is what caused Cain to hate and then murder his brother. See, this is what darkness does. Darkness, it causes parents to hate their children. Darkness, it causes children to hate their parents. Darkness, it causes brothers to murder brothers and for sisters to murder sisters. Look around at our world today. Darkness is why we are unable to love one another. And again, we wonder why many people struggle to find the spirit of Christmas. We wonder why people struggle to find the spirit of having love in their hearts today. I tell you today that too many of us have darkness in our hearts. Too many of us have darkness dwelling within us today. That is why many people struggle to be able to get into the spirit of Christ. That is why many people struggle today with getting into the spirit of Christmas. So I say to you today that darkness, it must be pushed out. Darkness, it must be pushed out of the hearts of man today. It must be pushed out of the souls of mankind today in order for us to find that spirit of Christmas, in order for us to find the spirit of Christ, in order for us to find love, in order for us to love one another. Darkness, it must be pushed out of our hearts. I don't know if you agree with me today. You see, we push this darkness out through Christ. We push this darkness out through being in fellowship with him and being in a close relationship with him. We push this darkness out by having his light within us. John, he wrote there in the fifth and in the sixth verse there in the first chapter. John wrote that the message we have heard from the beginning is that God is light. And in him, the Lord our God is no darkness at all. Therefore, those that say that they are in fellowship with God and walk in darkness just said that they are liars and do not practice truth. Again, in order for us to push darkness out of our hearts today, we must genuinely, we must truly be in fellowship with Christ. We must come to know him. We must come to understand him so that we can find true love. So that that spirit of Christ so that the spirit of Christmas is always with us, not just for one season, but for all of our life. Dr. Martin Luther King said that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Said only light can do that. Dr. King said that hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. These words I believe all of us would agree are wise words. I tell you today that Dr. King, he did not come up with those wise words by himself. These words, this thought that he had, 
They are based on sound doctrine, wisdom, doctrine that came directly from the Lord, our God. In scripture, we can see the light's incredible power over darkness. First, we see it in the book of Genesis when the Lord commanded there be light. When there was light, light, it pushed out the darkness. And when God saw the light, he said that it was good. I suppose it's good to have light in your heart over darkness. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong on that. But again, I believe that that scripture, I believe it backs me up on this today. When John wrote about the true light in his gospel, John wrote that the light of Christ shines in darkness. And darkness, John said, cannot comprehend it. John said that darkness, it cannot overpower. John said that it cannot overcome the light that comes from Christ. Again, if you desire to get into the spirit of Christmas, and you are being weighed down by hatred today, by bitterness, by darkness in your heart, by depression. I tell you today to turn to the light of Christ. That is my encouragement for everyone today. Turn to the light of Christ and it will work wonders for you today. You see, I tell you today that the light of Christ, it will give you hope. The light of Christ, I tell you today, it will flood out the darkness that is in your heart. It will flood out the darkness that is in your soul. When we live in fellowship with Christ, when we live with the light of Christ dwelling in us, in our hearts, I tell you today that we can move in the same manner. We can move in the same spirit of Christ in good times and in bad times as well. Do you hear me here today? Amen. As we know very well that the manner of Christ was and is love. This manner of love is the spirit that we as genuine believers that we ought to be moving in today, not just around this time of the year, but all year, every year of our life. In the fifth chapter of Matthew's gospel, Jesus called for us to move in that same manner of love as he did. Jesus, he called for those that would choose to follow in his manner of love, to love and to bless those that hate and curse them. Do you love those that hate and would curse you today? Jesus, he called for his disciples not to fight back against those that desire to harm and to hurt them. He encouraged us to turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. How many of us are turning the other cheek today? Mm -hmm. How many of us are trying to fight back today against hatred and bitterness today in the same manner that they fight with hatred and bitterness? Mm -hmm. In other words, the manner and the spirit that we are to move with is without bitterness. The manner and the spirit that we ought to move with today is without vengeance. The believer ought not crave, the believer ought not desire those things because those things are again of the dark. How are you going to find the spirit of Christ, let alone Christmas, if you are moving out of hatred, if you are moving out of bitterness? If you are moving with vengeance in your heart against those that may hate and spitefully use you and may curse you. So being in fellowship in a close relationship with Christ leads to the benefit of a heart of a soul that is filled with joy rather than a soul that is filled with hatred, a soul that is filled with bitterness, a soul that is filled with corruption, a soul that is dark, even more important. This heart, this soul, it is filled with joy, not just for a season of the year, 
but for every other season of the year as well. You see, the true spirit of Christmas, that is the spirit of Christ, it is not something that can simply be turned on like the lights in a room. The truth of the matter is that for all of those who live in fellowship with Christ, the spirit of Christmas, it ought to always be with us. Every second of the year, every second of our life, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Christmas through the love of God, it should always be with you. You can't simply turn it off and turn it on. God does not turn on and turn off his love for you. So why should you do it for those that are around you? I love the temptation song singing give love at Christmas, but why stop there? The spirit of Christmas ought to always be with you is what I'm trying to tell you today. Again, God's love, we know it never goes away. So why should our love go away? Now, I'm not oblivious to the fact that we all go through so much in a year that, yes, some of us, we may struggle with getting into the spirit of Christmas at the end of the year. Trust me, I certainly understand having gone through hard times, having gone through things myself. However, I know the power of the light of Christ. I know the power of being in a close relationship, being in fellowship with Christ. I know what it can do for you in good days and in bad days. It was prophecy that the virgin would conceive a son and shall call his name Emmanuel which means God with us. Mm -hmm. I want you to know and I want you to understand today that the Lord is always with you. The Lord is always with us mm -hmm. in good and in bad. Oh, yeah. In those days when we are struggling to find anything good, when we are struggling for hope, mm -hmm. when we are struggling to, in other words, get into the spirit, mm -hmm. We must learn to look to God first and foremost. We must learn to turn to him before we turn to anything or anybody else. You see, God is that hope. He is that good that all of us should latch on to. God is the one that will make you merry in your soul. Mm -hmm. Not just around this time of the year, but at any point in time in the year, in good days and in bad days. Mm -hmm. And we know that the spirit is always with us mm -hmm. through our fellowship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit is always with us, we know that the spirit is always working on our behalf to help us overcome the darkness that may be trying to creep within. Mm -hmm. We know that the Holy Spirit is always there working on our behalf to take away any bitterness that may be trying to creep within our hearts as well and to implant that hope, to implant that joy within our souls. Mm -hmm. To the Romans, Paul wrote that the spirit helps us in our weaknesses. When we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, is what Paul said. So yeah, I tell you today that if you want to get into this true spirit of Christmas, turn to the Lord. Turn to the only begotten Son. Turn, I say to you today, to the Holy Spirit. You see, when you and I turn to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will uplift us. The Holy Spirit will uplift us in darkness and the Holy Spirit will take away that bitterness so that we can be renewed, so that we can be filled with joy. Not just any kind of joy, but God's joy. 
the greatest joy of them all. Many of us, we seem to fail to re recognize just how powerful a work the Holy Spirit has done all these years when it comes to Christmas. You see, it was the work of the Holy Spirit that came upon and overshadowed Mary when she conceived in her womb Christ, our Savior. Well. By the Holy Spirit coming upon us and then working within us, we can always walk in the light of Christ. We can always be in fellowship with both the Lord and then all of those that are around us because the Holy Spirit gives us that love. The Holy Spirit gives us that joy to be able to do so. Being in fellowship with one another is another great benefit of walking in the light of Christ. By being in fellowship with one another, we can learn to commit ourselves to one another, to the benefit, to the uplifting of each other. Rather than moving out of selfishness, we will learn to move out of humility. Humility, that is exactly what we say the spirit of Christmas is all about. When we move out of humility for one another, we would then move freely to give of ourselves to each other. Mm -hmm. And giving is what we say the spirit of Christmas is actually all about. Mm -hmm. That action of love. Mm -hmm. John, he wrote there in 1 John, the second chapter, the seventh and the eighth verse. He wrote, brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment, which you have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him. But notice he said that it is true in us as well. This thing that John was talking about there is love. It dwells within us through the Holy Spirit, not just in December, but throughout all of the year. The only thing we have to do is bring it out. The, the spirit of Christmas, it does not begin after Thanksgiving. The spirit of Christmas, it does not end after December 25th. The spirit of Christmas it goes beyond those days. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond the Christmas tree. It goes beyond the garland. It goes beyond the stockings. It goes beyond the lights. It goes beyond the music. It goes beyond the gifts. Mm -hmm. You and I, we are in fellowship with Christ. And therefore, we will always have the joy, the love, and the hope of Christmas in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We should let the spirit and the manner of Christ always be with us. We should let it always lift us. We should let it always carry us. Again, I tell you today that if you are down and you are searching for the spirit of Christmas, turn to Christ, get in fellowship with him, get into a close relationship with him and let his light work in you. Let it give you hope. Let it give you love so that the spirit of Christ can always be with you. I tell you today that Christ entering into your heart, it will be the best gift. It will be the greatest gift that you will ever receive, not just this year, but for a lifetime. Amen. Amen. Amen.